Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna apply the ratio test to determine if this infinite series converges or diverges. First, we're gonna identify the term a sub n. So that's the entire term of the infinite series. So negative one to the n minus one times n squared divided by two to the n. Next, we need to increment and calculate a sub n plus one. To do that, we're just gonna replace all n's, all three of them in the negative one to the power in the n squared and two to the n. n is gonna get replaced with n plus one. All right, and if we replace that here, n plus one minus one, that'll just give us negative one to the nth power. n squared, replace the n inside with n plus one, we'll get n plus one squared. And in the denominator, two to the n, we replace there as well and get two to the n plus one. Now, what I like to do is simplify this as much as I can before I turn this into the ratio of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. And what I can do is the simple exponent trick where I'm gonna replace that denominator with two to the n times two to the one. We're gonna keep the numerator the same, but I'm gonna split that denominator up using basic exponent rules as two to the n times two to the one, or just two. And make sure you're comfortable with that. Again, you're multiplying bases here. You would add those exponents to get your previous denominator. All right, that's about as far as we can go with simplifying a sub n plus one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ratio in absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. All right, now we're gonna be working with fractions a lot. So the trick I always like to use is when we divide by a sub n, multiply by its reciprocal. So we're gonna keep a sub n plus one as is. We have negative one to the n times n plus one squared divided by two to the n times two. And now we divide by a sub n where we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply by two to the n divided by negative one to the n minus one, and then times n squared in that denominator as well. All right, now you should find some terms cancel out. We can cancel out the two to the n factors. And with the absolute value here, the negative one to the n's and negative one to the n minus one, take the absolute value of a negative, it just becomes positive, so we can just completely forget about those alternating terms. Now what we're gonna be left with is in the numerator, n plus one squared and two n squared in the denominator. Since n is positive and we have n squared and n plus one squared, the absolute value here doesn't matter since the quantity inside will be positive anyway. So we can write this simplified end result as n plus one squared divided by two n squared. All right, now there's a few ways you could proceed. Good tool to always have available is possibly using L'Hopital's rule, but this one you can rewrite it, which might be helpful. You can rewrite this as one half. And then since we have the same power two in the numerator and denominator, I can rewrite this as the fraction n plus one divided by n all squared. And since I have just n in the denominator, I can divide that into each term in the numerator. So if you want to, as an alternate method to applying L'Hopital's rule, you could rewrite this term like that. All right, now we're ready to take the limit of this. So we're gonna calculate L with the ratio test, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, we just calculated that. Let's go ahead and use this simplified end result. If you were gonna use this version right here, kind of in the middle, 
you might want to apply L'Hopital's rule, but let's use the fully simplified version. So we'll take the limit now as n goes to infinity of 1 half times 1 plus 1 over n all squared. Now as n goes to infinity, your 1 over n term is going to get small approaching 0. And it looks like what we find here is our limit is going to approach an equal 1 half. So as n goes to infinity, this ratio of terms approaches 1 half, which is less than 1. And we actually reach a conclusion here. Let's just be precise with what we can conclude from the ratio test. If your limit is less than 1, then we get to determine that our infinite series is absolutely convergent. And recall the theorem that says if it's absolutely convergent, then it's also convergent. So we've determined here that our infinite series is convergent. And this was a simple, straightforward example of applying the ratio test. Pretty good example in terms of the simplification. We have n to a power, but more importantly, 2 to an nth power where we applied our simple exponent trick here, which is going to be incredibly useful. Hope you enjoyed the short video. If you did, like and subscribe.